This is a really amazing program called Graphic. It used to be called iDraw, but it's got more sophisticated. I was studying how to do this in Adobe Illustrator, uh, which is now a subscription, so it would be costly just to make a clock face. I'm trying to make a clock face for a tutorial that looks something like this. Now I could use the one online that I got, but I thought it would be clearer if I did it myself on a drawing application. So I looked through all my applications and uh, I had several drawing applications but they were either too complicated or not easy enough to do this. So um, I've set the round circle with a grid to X spacing, Y spacing of 10. You also set snap to grid. The reason for this is uh, the circle, this is uh, the circle layer, and this is the small degrees I'm going to use. Um, so I'll go back to the round circle, and you can see it snaps to the grid. I'll undo that. So it's snapping to here, to here, to here, and to here. When you size a circle, you push shift and it'll stay uh, in proportion. If you let shift go, it'll go vertically or horizontally longer. Cool. That's pretty basic for most programs, but the interesting thing was when I went to layers and I made my degree here. Here I'm selecting it. Now I go to the rotate tool, which is right here and uh, we have this little red thingy here and it makes it easier if I put use snap to grid. Now since I want to have a clock face with 60 um, lines I make the angle 6 degrees that is 360 divided by 60 sections equals 6 now you push copy 59 times that is pretty awesome seeing that you put the circle here right in the center of the large circle this is what the what the points are rotating around from this axis. Now if we go back to our circle of fifths original file that I got off the internet I'd like to make every five degrees a little darker. Zero which represents the note C 100, 200, 300, 400. So what I'll do is I'll select the move tool Select that baby there and increase it to seven points. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is pull it and it'll snap the grid. So it's exactly twice as long as the thinner, shorter degrees. Selected, go to rotate tool. Drag this little X to the middle, set the angle to 30 degrees, and push copy. Pretty awesome. Now the only thing left now is to write in the um, numbers. 0, 100, 200, and 100 increments up to 1100. So what I'll do now is go to the text tool and draw a text box 
and I'll write in 100. And it's centered very nicely because we uh, still have the grid, snap the grid. So really the 100 is going to be moved over. And I'm going to copy and paste. And make this zero. 100. And later I may turn off snap to grid so I can move these exactly where I want. Starting to look acceptable here. Very nice program. I use several graphics programs, which I should also review because each of them does something differently that the other doesn't do. And some of the graphic programs I use are Pixelmator, Graphic, the one I'm using now, iStudio Publisher, and Intaglio. One final thing, I'm going to export the file now and I want to show you all the choices there are. You go to File, Export, and look at this. This is pretty nice. PSD, I believe that's Photoshop, PDF, SVG, ping file, um, JPEG, TIFF. I usually, for transparency, choose a GIF file. Save. Save it to my desktop. And voila. Clock circle GIF. Now you see it's gray instead of white. What's cool about this is I'm using another program here called iStudio Publisher. Now you can see how this PNG file looks. You can see all the letters in the white and the black spacing. And this is a GIF file. Um, you can see the numbers and the uh, black markers and they are transparent and this is what they look like when they go over a white canvas such as here pretty cool here's something I just looked up in the directions I couldn't figure out how to multi select objects uh, usually on a Mac you use shift click plus command key. Here you use click plus shift. So I'll select objects that are next to each other and then one is that is far away. And you'll see there's a bounding box. Uh, the three objects I selected I could increase in size. This one, this one, and this one. So you can select objects non-contiguous. Now if I use the left arrow, it'll move only those three objects. I'm going to undo. There you have it. Very nice. So the manual is quite good. The support is also quite good. I have emailed them and they've gotten back to me promptly. So graphics are really cool art application you could purchase at the App Store for a mere $30. I rate 5 stars. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.